Today, every single American infantryman is equipped with a pair of night vision goggles and a PEC-15 IR laser pointer on their rifle, allowing them to easily acquire and engage targets at night at distances of over 300 meters. This equipment is largely responsible for Western militaries owning the night, allowing them to destroy numerically superior forces. But can you say the same thing about China's infantry? In 2020, we started to see China's People's Liberation Army issuing their soldiers with night vision devices. But exactly how many PLA troops have them? And how advanced are they? When researching the question, I quickly realized this is a very heavily guarded secret within the CCP. It's one of the most overlooked and least understood aspects of the PLA. First, we're gonna cover the history of how the United States came to own the night and the next generation systems being deployed today. Then we'll dive into Russia and China's attempts to acquire this technology and the reasons as to why they might be struggling to mass produce it. But first, I have an awesome opportunity for you. I've partnered with a veteran-owned small business called GetEnterToWin.com. They give you, my viewers, a chance to win these incredible $10,000 Armasite PVS31D Generation 3 Pinnacle Elite Night Vision Goggles. The way it works is you just click the link in the description text below the video. Head over to getentertowin.com slash task and purpose, buy one of our sick limited edition night vision themed mugs, and you're automatically entered to win. So you get the collectible, plus it gives you a chance to win these badass $10,000 Armasite night vision goggles. I'm jealous one of you guys are gonna get to have this. <laughs> these are way better than the nods I had in Iraq with higher resolution and ghost white phosphor tubes so no old school green tint. In fact, these are actually the same new night vision being issued to the US Marine Corps right now. So just click the link in the description, head over to getentertowin.com slash task and purpose, buy a cool limited edition mug, and get your automatic entry and a chance to win these amazing $10,000 Armasite NVGs. You must be a resident of the United States to be eligible to win. Thanks for your support and good luck. In order to understand China and Russia's night vision capabilities, we need to understand how the United States came to dominate the night in the first place. Between the 1970s and 1980s is what I would call the US military night vision proliferation. This is the time period that humanity truly conquered the night for the first time in history. Because in 1972, the first practical wearable goggles appeared with the PBS-5 seen on Delta Force commandos and helicopter pilots. With 20,000 times the light amplification and a respectable 60 degree field of view, it allowed troops to drive, fly, and provide air cover in the dark. The enemy could no longer safely launch attacks at night. Generation 3 NVGs like the PVS-7 from the 1980s gave 50,000 light intensification. Thermal imagers were invented during this same time period that used the contrast of heat signatures to create a picture and was literally like having a superpower in the hands of your average infantryman. You could see through smoke and dust. When thermals were paired with missile technology and advanced computing chips, you get the Javelin missile system. We were in the gosh darn night vision renaissance and its effects on target were undeniable. The US Thunder Run invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan would have looked very different without this technology. It would have looked a lot more like Russia's invasion of Ukraine, where they failed to gain night superiority. And it turned out very few of Russian soldiers had any night vision. Before we get into analyzing Russia and China's night warfare abilities, I think it's really important to understand how long it took the US military to produce and adopt this technology from zero to 100 because it could give us a frame of reference for how fast China could do it. In 1976, the first production contract was awarded for the PVS-4. By 1989, over 60,000 units had been manufactured. And by 2002, there were 150,000 NVGs in the American arsenal. But just being able to see in the dark isn't enough. You also wanna be able to accurately hit targets. So between 1992 and 1999, we saw another 60,000 of the rifle-mounted PAC laser beam systems. Laser sights are good for more than raves and rooting movies. This device is called a paired solution. It shoots a beam of IR light that has been calibrated in line with the barrel of your weapon. In boot camp, every US soldier, including myself, had to go through training on how to sight the laser with the rifle, and you have to qualify on hitting targets in complete darkness at 150 meters. 
In small unit tactics, these are a godsend because it allows your squad leader to clearly mark targets and direct fire in the dark. Without this IR laser sight, it's impossible to aim down sights with your nods. Here, look, for instance, if I try to do this and then I try to aim down here, but the pack is often overlooked technology because you never see these on Russian or Chinese soldiers' rifles, even if they have NVGs. It's one of the dead giveaways for analyzing a country's night warfare capabilities. The first thing you wanna look at is, does their helmet have an NVG mount? Is that even there at all? And then look at their weapon. Does it have a laser pointer on it? If it's missing either of those, the force is still in the crawl or walk phase. For context with all those NVG numbers, when we look at the US Army's active duty Infantry 11 Bravo MOS, between the rank of E1 and E4, there's only 25,000 soldiers. Add in the National Guard and other combat arms, and you have about 100,000 frontline ground troops. So this was enough to equip everyone who needed to close with and destroy the enemy. Ultimately, over 500,000 of the PVS-14 nods were manufactured by 2011. One of the major reasons why the US military owns the night is because in the 1990s, commercial industry demand kicked in and made manufacturing these devices much cheaper on a massive scale. Every civilian EMS helicopter wanted them to fly people safely to hospitals, for instance. So in about 30 years, the US military went from a contested night to fully owning and dominating it. This is also the same time period that the military switched to an all volunteer force, and it's no coincidence because all their frontline troops needed to meet a certain standard of intelligence to operate and be trusted with this new, expensive responsibility. These PVS-14 goggles that I was issued were by far the most expensive kit I had, costing $4,650, and the PEC-15 was another $1,500. This is part of the reason why the Russian military doesn't trust their conscripts with this tech. I could have gotten myself a pretty sweet Dodge Charger if I just sold it to a foreign government. I remember when I was in Iraq and I did nighttime raids, it was terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying to be the number one point man in a stack to kick in that door and it's pitch black inside the house. And one of the only things that you kind of is your like your safety blanket is that you know you have night vision sights on and you can see in the dark. So it's weird to me that so many opposing forces have just kind of let it go by the wayside. Now there is one downside that we need to talk about with the PVS-14 and the PEC-15 setup. It's an active beam, so your friends and foe can easily detect the laser sight. Also, those MVGs still require some ambient light from the moon or stars from the tubes to amplify the existing ambient light. About two years ago, I made a video talking about how the US adversaries were about to be able to contest their night superiority because of these vulnerabilities. Since then, the DOD has, they've made me eat my words, and they've dropped two new devices that are insane. The ENVGB Enhanced Night Vision Goggles Binocular fuses this image intensification with thermal heat signature tech to give you an image that clearly outlines enemy's location. We've since dropped the noisy, low resolution green image for a white phosphor tube, which is easier to see the contrast of the image. The goggles now have the first heads up display with compass headings and the ability to mark waypoints in enemy locations. Once this is integrated with AI software, we're gonna see ChatGPT acquiring and choosing where you should fire to maximize your effects on target. And I'm not joking, integration with these sensors and artificial intelligence is coming soon. The second sight, the family of weapons sight, Thermal, makes it so you no longer need a PEC-15 laser system that points a beam that the enemy can see. Now it wirelessly sends the targeting information from your weapon to your eyepiece, solving a decades old problem. Now. What about our adversaries' night abilities? In Russia's war in Ukraine, there are reports that the Russian field commanders are choosing to fight at night the old-fashioned way, by lighting up the battlefield with flares fired from artillery. Only the most elite Spetsnaz troops are issued expensive NVGs. A leaked 2013 email from Dmitry Rogozin, Deputy Prime Minister for the Defense Ministry, reads, at present, the Russian army only has a few hundred individual imagers and no sighting system with advanced performance. So why the shortage? Why can't Russia solve their night vision problem by throwing money at it? I mean, you would think their $84 billion defense budget in 2021 would have covered devices that cost a few thousand bucks. This is because 
They lack the chip production industry, and they failed to import the tech before sanctions prevented them. I'll spare us the science mumbo jumbo talk, and I'll put it into words that I can understand. Basically, you need to be able to create micro bolometer arrays to produce MVGs. This is the kind of tech Russia has outsourced for decades. Micro bolometer chips were originally developed by the US Defense Department in the 1970s and were classified until 1992. A serious head start. Only the United States, Taiwan and Japan and China have the ability to mass produce this advanced chip. So what do we see instead? We see Russia's trying to acquire MVGs by stealing them. In fact, the US Department of Justice has prosecuted over five cases of illegal export of night vision equipment to Russia since 2013. Russian agents have used a complex web of shell companies that have illegally exported 1,000 night vision parts to Russia. In 2013, they were within a hair's length away from acquiring the manufacturing base by partnering with a French company. Western sanctions after the invasion of Crimea prevented the deal from going through just in time. Having a night fighting edge can mean the difference between victory and going home with your tail between your legs in modern warfare. Just look at the fact that America first provided a batch of 2,500 of the PBS-14 goggles and a few of the $40,000 GP NVGs to Ukrainian forces in 2018. Since then, at least another 10,000 more units have been sent by the US alone. If Russia only had a few hundred in 2013, or let's exaggerate and say they had a few thousand, that means Ukraine likely has far more, and it could help partly explain some of their battlefield successes. The Institute for the Study of War recently pointed out the effects this has had on their recent Ukrainian counteroffensive. Even primary Russian sources like this mill blogger claimed that Ukrainian forces are launching assaults at night because Western provided equipment provides them with excellent night vision optics. But is the same situation true for China? 30% of the world's entire manufacturing takes place in China. Surely they can pump these devices out fast, right? Well, we've learned the key things to look for already in this video about the dead giveaways that you need to look at when assessing a military's night capabilities. By looking closely at their forces, we see until very recently, Chinese helmets did not have any metal MVG bracket for mounting nods. Their old Type 95 rifle barely had the rail space to fit a laser system if they even wanted to, and we never saw them on there. A Pac-15 equivalent is suspiciously absent from all their rifles, even their modern QBZ-191. But we also know China has been increasing defense spending and quickly modernizing their forces. China has been able to successfully steal night vision technology over the years, and they've reverse engineered it. As early as 1993, a man was charged with exporting 600 night vision parts to China. Then in 2007, the American ITT Corporation, during the height of the war on terror in around 2007, they were working 24 seven shifts at this company to produce enough PVS-14 goggles to satiate the US military's unending demand to reach their target goal. Between the years 2000 and 2008, this company started outsourcing some of their highly sensitive NVG production to Chinese companies. This is what everyone was doing at the time with globalization essentially giving away top secret design details and manufacturing processes to China. ITT pled guilty to this illegal export and paid $100 million in penalties, and it led to the company changing their name multiple times since then to avoid this disaster, I think. However, mass production of NVGs has still eluded Xi Jinping in China, mainly for three reasons, I think. So first, there's no large scale commercial civilian market for NVG image intensifier tubes, partly because they're illegal. And second, historically, the strength of the Chinese military was always their overwhelming numbers, which meant they didn't place a premium on technology until recently. And that leads us to the third reason. That investment that they've been increasing into this high tech is going straight to their Air Force and Navy instead of the ground forces, and that's straight from their defense papers. The mid-2000s is when we start to see limited numbers of MVGs in the Chinese military, most of which were the BBG 011A. They were copies of the European Tails Lucy night vision goggles with some minor improvements, such as allowing it to accept more common tubes on the market. 
These are likely Generation 2 Plus NVGs. In 2014, we saw them training with night vision goggles, but there was no sign of widespread adoption. So far, it's mostly been seen issued to recon units or the Tezan Special Operation Units and their helicopter pilots. So I should point out here that the PLA keeps this information a closely guarded secret. They don't release the exact numbers on how many MVGs they issue into what unit, like the US does, but there are a number of ways we can work backwards to figure out their abilities. Most recently, in 2020, we saw Chinese soldiers were issued monocular devices that look similar to the American PVS-14s, and to the untrained eye, it looked like maybe China had caught up. But when we look closer, we notice that these MVGs are actually digital, not analog. China took advantage of commercial products they were already manufacturing at scale, and they sold them around the world on sites like Wish.com and AliExpress. But the problem is, this is like using your consumer digital camera night vision mode. The digital night vision is very different and usually far less effective, especially for your mil-spec purposes. There's a latency delay that makes them almost useless for a combat role. So there's kind of a, like a, a waving, fogging illusion. When you move your head, the image kind of like distorts. Whether they would be useful in navigation is also iffy. One of the dead giveaways here is when you look at how flimsy the whole nod mount looks and how lightweight the system is. None of these troops are equipped with the necessary $1,500 laser pointer that would be required for night combat anyway. It looks like this digital ICS eyepiece is more used to mark friendly forces and send video information to headquarters. 90% of the Tibet military command has this equipment and it looks like what it really is is micromanaging software. It's not an actual night vision device. But you can see squad leaders are monitoring their troops and what their troops see through their cameras. It's part command and control device and part digital night vision device. These are likely very cheap for them to produce, around 300 bucks each, instead of the thousands of dollars for a proper image intensifying system. It looks to be a mil-spec version of the NV-10 that go for between $100 and $300 online. These devices are made from a series of factories in the Xijiang province on the PLA military contract. The light sensitivity is better than Generation 1, but still probably falls short of Generation 3, well definitely. It does have an integrated compass feature, but the refresh rate is probably 60 Hz, which is not enough fidelity for combat. This can also induce motion sickness in the operator and presents artifacts in the image when in motion which makes me question if it's even safe to use these for driving at night. And that is a huge part of logistics for the military. Can you keep your forces going at night? It looks like these are just a stopgap asset for China. They're a temporary fill there until they get around to prioritizing the creation of Generation 3 tubes. This is admittedly a good way to mass produce a level of night vision capability and familiarization within the PLA very quickly. You can get five of these digital devices for the cost of one PBS-14. These are better than nothing. They provide a decent level of night vision for marching around in the dark, but digital MVGs are becoming better at a fast rate. And this gets us to a really interesting point about Chinese manufacturing and MVGs. Because oddly enough, China has produced arguably more high-tech IR-511-8 thermal scopes. So it looks like this might be their method for aiming at night. Part of the reason why China's thermal heat signature devices seem more advanced than the image intensification goggles is because there's already a massive commercial demand for thermal cameras. And China is able to fulfill that demand with companies like Guidar, Heikivision, and Infra. But when you look at the night vision goggle industry, there's far less demand for image intensifying tubes, partly for the fact that they're prohibited in many places around the world. There's also no domestic existing supply chain, and it would cost millions of dollars for China to create one. The civilian market can give us an idea of when China might be able to mass produce this tech. By 2032, China's expected to have a night vision device market worth $1.3 billion. Right now, the US market for night vision is worth $6 billion. What this tells us is that this tech will increasingly become cheaper and easier for them to manufacture. Now we know China has had the ability to produce in their civilian industry Generation 2, but it looks like they might not be able to mass produce Generation 3. This brings me to the conclusion that as of today, China's infantry have no real major night fighting tech for their ground offensives. I think a large part of the reason why is because since 2004, 
the Army has officially been listed in second place for development behind other services in China. When we look at their 2015 National Defense White Paper, it states the traditional mentality that land outweighs sea must be abandoned, and a great importance has to be attached to managing the seas and oceans and protecting maritime rights and interests. There are a few ways we can interpret this. It could mean China's prioritizing funding new missiles, new fighter jets, new aircraft carriers, instead of NVGs. I think the Russian military also prioritized a lot less these assets for missiles and tanks instead of kit for their regular ground troops. Before 2022, it seemed like everyone forgot that at the end of the day, it's your foot soldiers who take and hold ground. They're the ones that you're asking to kick indoors. They're the ones that you're asking to go and capture an urban city. If you don't have the most advanced capabilities available, then it's gonna make their job difficult. Everyone knows how important air superiority is, but night superiority for ground troops is often overlooked, even though it's proven in the past and in present wars to be a decisive factor. Currently, the US military clearly continues to own the night and likely will for at least the next 10 years. How fast China would be able to manufacture the capability if they chose to prioritize it remains to be seen. But if the US timeline is any indication, it could be done rapidly. And remember, if you want to get your hands on your own pair of sweet $10,000 Armasite PVS31D Generation 3 Pinnacle Elite Night Vision Goggles, then you can click the link in the description below, head to getentertowin.com slash task and purpose, and buy one of our collectible mugs to automatically be entered to win $10,000 NVGs.